This is Jason Belzer for Athletic Director U. We're here today in beautiful Rochester, Michigan on the campus of Oakland University. Um, joined by Director of Athletics, Jeff Konya, and Head Men's Basketball Coach, Greg Campy. Thank you for joining me today, gentlemen. Um, so we're gonna talk about relationships between athletic directors and coaches. Uh, Greg, you've been here for 32 years, one of the longest tenured men's basketball coaches on a Division I level. I believe you're third. Um, and I'd, I'd love to hear you've worked under a number of different athletic directors. You've served as director of athletics a few times. How is it, uh, how is it working under different people? Uh, people come, they go, different management, and yet you have been able to maintain great consistency and success as the men's basketball coach here. Talk a little bit about working for different people and what it's now like to work for Jeff. Uh, you know, Jason, I think that's a great question. Um, I think what I've learned through this long tenure is that you, you only fight the real battles. And, you know, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And I found out being happy is a lot more fun than being right. So what, what I've tried to do through the years with the different personalities of the different athletic directors is try and find out who they are as a person. And then, you know, that's important to me. And it's really, really important that I have a great relationship with my athletic director. And I think all through the years I've had, now they've been different types of relationships. In Jeff's case, he and I are very similar people. Uh, we like the same stuff. Uh, you know, I, I think we're cut from, a little bit from the same cloth, so it's been really easy there. It's kind of been a natural um, friendship because I, I really like to believe it is a friendship. Um, I've had, you know, I've, my first athletic director, well, uh, maybe the smartest guy I ever knew because he hired me uh, at my first job. Um, he was a very, you know, straight-laced, uh, different guy. And, and so you just had to figure out who they are and then understand what you want from them. And I think any advice I'd give to a young coach is that, you know, it's not about what you want to get or what you, it's about every day when you come to work, are you happy? Do you get to work together? Um, are you there for the, you know, the, the cause of winning for your university? And when you can figure that out and figure what your boss is important to him and how to do that, you're going to have a much better career. Was there any time that you didn't necessarily get along with your athletic director or you found uh, conflict or? Well, I think you have um, conflict on issues. I've never had conflict with the person. I've had conflict on issues. Um, what I thought was important, how I thought we needed to do things to win. One of the things that Jeff did when he got here is he called me and he said, look, I want to help you win. I want to know about you. What do you think is important? How do you go about your job? Because my job is to help you. And that was a refreshing uh, new thing for me because it was always the other way around when the new ADs came in. I wanted to do exactly what he was doing. So that was kind of interesting for me. Um, so, you know, conflict, no. And again, I, there's been, and, and with Jeff, there's probably been one or two issues that have come up that, you know, I went in and said, you know, this isn't, this isn't right. We've, you know, I won't want it done this way. And I think he was taken back by that because normally I don't do that. And we looked at it and he agreed and, and uh, he actually did what I wanted him to do, which is probably unique in the AD coaching world. Uh, um, it, it was just, you know, if, if you know each other really well and you know what makes each person who they are, when a conflict comes, you can see in their eyes what they're thinking. And I think that's how you really get along. And that's how you, the greater good of the school, the greater good of the basketball program is what we're working for. And when we each know that, it makes it very easy. Sure. Jeff, was there any bit of uh, intimidation coming into Oakland and having a coach that's been there for three decades and has really kind of become part of the institution? I mean, uh, you know, a lot of times athletic directors take over, particularly at larger schools where there's a coach that sometimes you can say is powerful or has great relationships with alumni and individuals that you are now dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. How did you kind of get yourself ready for that and, and what kind of relationship do you have with Greg now? Uh, that's a good question. Was I intimidated? No. Should I have been? Probably. I, I think uh, as I walked into the situation, 
uh, I've always had really good relationships with coaches. Um, like I said, we may not agree with everything, but if they understand kind of what I'm about and my perspective on things, usually we can work through uh, some of the minutia, some of the, the minor details. I think the, the important thing for any athletic director with any coach walking in a situation is try to get to vulner vulnerability-based trust. I mean, because you're going to have disagreements in this line of work. There's no question. I mean, we've had a, several disagreements, but the, the point is, if you know that you have the same ultimate objectives, you can work through those issues and you can kind of learn from each other as to what you're thinking. And obviously, compromise is a good thing sometimes where you both kind of walk away from the discussion and say, you know, I, I think this could work and, and you feel good about the, the ultimate direction. Um, but Coach made it easy. I mean, walking in, he's, he's got a really great personality. I mean, uh, really engaging, uh, makes you feel kind of welcome. Um, and he had a great historical perspective on Oakland. It was obviously a relationship that I valued because there's a learning curve anytime you walk into a situation and the quicker that you can get up to speed on, on what makes an organization or an institution tick, uh, you're gonna you know, get farther along at a quicker pace. And that was, that was valuable. Um, so I, I think that we, we work well together and, and ever since you know, summer of 2014, we are still trying to push the agenda with respect to men's basketball the overall athletics and that's the other thing the coach uh, really believes in is it is about men's basketball but it is about the athletics organization we had a game a couple of years ago where we were playing northern kentucky and women's soccer and he's over there cheering in the uh watching the game in the tournament um and trying to coach from you know through the tv so uh but it's it's that kind of level of support that we all have and what we're trying to build in our culture that you know, coach obviously in a leadership position, people will see and watch what he does. Sure. Jeff, this is the second uh, round for you in terms of being an athletic director. You previously were at Cal State Bakersfield. Talk to me about what you feel are the two or three most important things that an athletic director can do to support their head coach. First of all, not micromanage. You hire your coaches to do a specific job. I like to think of it as treating the head coaches as a CEO of their program. Um, ultimately, CEOs have to um, make difficult decisions and you have to support those decisions. I think the second thing is uh, you have to talk with your coaches to figure out the strategy of how you're going to get it better. And I think the administrator role in all this is to provide an infrastructure for success. So whether that's facility or funding or scheduling or uniforms or lighting or a court or whatever it is, um, you need to find out what that CEO needs to be successful and then you have to come up with a game plan with your staff in order to facilitate that objective. And then the third thing is you have to have an open door. I mean again we talked a little bit in the last session about relationships. You have to really trust and value the relationship in order to invest in the people and invest in the proper decisions. You, you have to have the honest dialogue in order to get to the right result most of the time and so if it's a game of show and tell or positioning or sneaking around ultimately you could get to the end but the means are going to be off and you're not going to be able to replicate that over time and so therefore the organizations that move ahead have to have that honest open communication. Sure. Greg same question but from the opposite perspective what are a couple of things that you think a athletic director needs to do in order to make sure that their head coaches are successful? Well again I've worked for a bunch of different ones and I've seen different styles. Um, one of the th I'll give you an example between Jeff and I. Jeff when he got here his idea of scheduling and my idea of scheduling were complete opposites. And I was protective of that because scheduling is very important to the coach. You know, your ultimate record is what people remember. And he came in with a different idea and I was a little bit, but I was open to it. And it, I've actually now, I don't schedule any games without the collab collaboration with him. I'll go in and say this, 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 he'll say this. And we now have kind of, married that scheduling thing and, it, and we've really improved the amount of home games we played. He's brought money to the table and given me guarantee games which had never happened before. And so what I learned from that is, all right, here's someone new with an, a new idea. And what he said to me was, I'm here to make your program better and help you. And I allowed him to do that and it's worked. And so the lesson that I learned from that is, you know, you, you, that collaborative thing that we've talked about before and that trust that you go in together and you look at it because you know your common goal. So from an athletic director standpoint, I, when 
what I need is I need somebody that cares as much about winning as I do, that cares about doing it the, the, the right way, and you know, that's a whole nother discussion is what really is the right way, um, and that we're a team, that we're on the same team and we do it together, and that's all I would ever want from an athletic director. I'm going to take the years and the skills that he has, combine them with the years that I have, and hopefully together we get better. How do you hold each other accountable? Well, ultimately for me, we have the year-end evaluation um, and accountability. You can see it rep uh, represented all of our, our athletics uh, walls and hallways and things, all these sayings revolving around culture and fitting in. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be the beginning and the end of the conversation for, for me is, are you accountable to the culture that we're trying to establish? And, you know, nobody's infallible. Nobody's batting a, a thousand. I mean, in baseball, if you're batting 300, you're a Hall of Famer. But in this particular case, hopefully you're batting closer to a thousand. Um, but we talked through some of those situations and ultimately accountability goes both ways. I mean, I, I think if you can't just say thou shall do and not look yourself in the mirror and say, I need to, to also be a part of this. And I think sometimes that, that comes across and really hurts organizations when uh, the leaders aren't paving the way of what they want to see. I just suggested that you know Greg does so many things in our culture that the younger coaches or staff members uh, watch him and how he engages in this. And it obviously rubs off and obviously helps in terms of uh, their th thought processes, how to go about their business. And in my, I see that as the same way with my staff. If I am saying, please do this, you know, and I'm going to hold you accountable for that, and then I'm on, you know, I'm on a different set of circumstances, then there's going to be a, not really a legitimate culture there. And it's going to ultimately kind of, I think, end up in, a, in the wrong place. Well, you know, Jason, I've been around a long time. I've never heard this question before. That, that, that's, this is a good question. But I think the truth of the matter is, for me and my standpoint where I'm at, I, I can't hold him accountable. I can't. He's the boss. And um, when you look at that, you have to understand, I think, again, if I was talking to young coaches, and I, and I do that in our, uh, in our office area and in our world, when the young guys come in or the young gals come in, they all want to talk. And one of the things I, I tell them is that you have to step back and realize you're trying to do everything you can to help make your program successful. And the athletic director, in this case, Jeff, he has to do everything he can to make Oakland University successful. And ultimately, he's accountable to the president and to the board of trustees. You're accountable to him. So when you are sitting here and you're looking and making your decisions, understand the most important thing is Oakland. It is the single most important thing, Oakland University. Not your program, not what you want, but what Oakland University and how it's represented it out into the public, because ultimately that's what the Board of Trustees and the Presidents care about. They care about winning very much. And anybody who says that ADs and Presidents don't care about winning, that they're lying to you. They care about winning far and away more than anything else. But they also care that you win the right way, that your academics are good, that you, um, you, know, you do community service, that, that the public perceives you as being first class and doing this the right way. And he or she, the athletic director, is the guardian of that. So when you go in and you're upset about things, understand that Oakland comes first. And I think that from my standpoint, from the coaching standpoint, that if you understand that, your relationship with people are gonna be a lot better and you're gonna be able to do your job a lot better. Sure. So when Jeff came in, he instituted a new subjective bonus structure um, to the coaches at the institution. And we started talking a little bit about accountability here. Talk to me about that. I mean, what's it like knowing that, uh, obviously you're here to perform, you're here to do certain things, uh, but now the person that you're working for has the subjective ability to potentially compensate you more, and they always have the subjective ability to, to retain you or to fire you or whatever it may be. How do you kind of rectify that? Do you feel less pressure, more pressure now in different ways when it comes to knowing that part of your salary is based off of someone else's I'm the wrong, yeah, I'm the wrong guy to ask that question because 
that's not a driving force to me. I've never really, I, yes, we all want more money. For me though, it's more, I think you're judged in the public eye when they see what you make and things like that on your, on your value. So if you're the lowest paid coach in your league, I think people judge you maybe that you're just not as good as this guy or, or something like that. So, you know, my whole thing when I talk to my bosses about compensation is more, you know, we're trying to make Oakland a major player in college basketball. How are we perceived? And that's, that's more important to me. Again, it's that Oakland thing and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I'm not I've not gone through a day of my adult life ever worrying about, you know, my family's secure. I feel that, you know, I don't worry about that compensation thing. So I'm hoping that, you know, Jeff values what I do. And I'm hoping that, you know, he came up with this idea of uh, what your question is. And I'm hoping that he values me and that he'll take care of it. And if he doesn't, I'd do a better job next year. So, Jeff, at some point, you're going to have to replace Greg. He's not going to be here forever. Uh, and he's become a part of the institution. What, uh, what have you kind of thought about or, or what needs to happen? I mean, 30, 32 years could potentially be longer now. Actually, I think it's going into 34. 34. Okay, yeah. 30, 34 years. It started when I was 14. Well, <laughs> 34 years. How do, you, how do you replace somebody like that? Uh, well, you can't have somebody step into the shoes and be Greg Campy. I think that's that's first and foremost. Um, I haven't really even thought about succession planning, if I'm if I'm honest, uh, with respect to men's basketball. Um, I don't know what it will look like in the future, so it's hard to project for me because the circumstances may be different. I don't know where uh, the state of men's basketball will be when Greg desires to step away from the game, if he step desires to step away from the game. Um, so, you know, at that point, you know, do we have a new building? Uh, do we have more resources? Do we have less resources? Are we in a different uh, circumstance? Um, so it's kind of hard to judge a secession plan when you don't know what you're, what, what's in the future. That said, I mean, I think I kind of know the fit of a coach that works well with my personality. And so I probably start there as a baseline of somebody who I think could, could work well. Um, but knowing that you probably aren't going to be able to, to replace what Greg's brought to the table for the past 34 years. Sure. Greg, what have you done to make sure that one day when you step away or move on that the program is, whoever takes over for you can pick up where you left off? Well, the, the, the best thing that you can do is keep winning. And because with winning comes more media exposure. Uh, I was just out in Vegas for the coaches versus cancer, and man, Oakland's hot in Vegas. I mean, the, everywhere I went, the people knew about us, and, and I think it's because the league we're in, we play the Friday night game, and there's only like five games, so the ESPN exposure, we played on national TV 10 or 11 times this year. Um, just by winning and by increasing the exposure of the university, I think it's going to help draw more donors, help him with the budget, help him with the facilities, all the things that need to be upgraded, um, I think is the key. And uh, so for me, just keep doing what we're doing, pushing forward. One of the things that I've tried to do, Jason, and I, I think I've been successful at this, and I, I've never really tried to promote me. I've always tried to promote Oakland. Um, every radio interview I do, every TV interview I do, you know, you got that. Whenever you do an interview, there's always that awkward beginning and that awkward end, you know. Hey, how you doing? You know, hey, it's, oh, I'm doing good. How you doing? You know, almost every interview starts like that. And so what I've tried to do to end my interviews is always say thanks for having Oakland University on. And, and I think that that's almost become a tagline for me. I think all the media around here know that at the end of the interview, I'm going to say that. And again, it's just trying to promote our university. I think if I can continue to do that, then maybe, I'll, maybe he'll give me one of those bonuses he can he can check and add on. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, we've, we've come to the end of our interview, so thank you, gentlemen, for joining me today. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having Oakland on. Thank you.